we're most familiar with the idea of exchange rates in talking about what one type of currency is worth in terms of a different type of currency. But there are other theories about how this should be done. The most common of those theories is uh, what is called purchasing power parity. Looking at the term itself, well, parity means fairness. Uh, so purchasing power means, um, well, purchasing power parity means how equal is the purchasing power of different currencies in their respective countries. So let's ask this question. Let's start here. Would you rather make $50,000 living in New York City or $50,000 living in Oklahoma City? Well, some people might choose the former and some people might choose the latter. I think most people that choose Oklahoma City, they would do so because they know that with $50,000, you could buy a lot more stuff. You could live in a bigger house, drive a nicer car, have better things, go out to eat more often than you could with the same amount of money because doing those same activities in New York City is significantly more expensive. These two numbers are actually based on today's, uh, today's exchange rates between the countries, uh, the countries that we're talking about. So there's South Africa, the exchange rate is a dollar to 11.06 Rand and a euro is about a dollar to 0.79, really 0.8 euro. So these figures are, if we were to take 50,000 US dollars and directly convert them into Rand or into Euro. And then the same question. With the equivalent of $50,000 in South Africa, you probably would get a lot more stuff. You could drive a nicer car, live in a nicer place, afford more things in Johannesburg than you could in either of these two American places. And then Paris, again, it's, it's an expensive city, so things are just gonna be different. Does that mean no one would choose to live in Paris or to live in New York City? No, I dare say a lot of people would choose to live in Paris or choose to live in New York City. But that's because they're paying for something else. They're paying to live in that place. They're paying for the ambiance um, instead of maybe more physical things. So the discrepancy between what $50,000 is when you translate it into different currencies and what $50,000 can buy is the discrepancy that purchasing power parity seeks to even out. So let's look at a comparison. This is gonna be for South Africa, and we're gonna compare it to Switzerland. And what we see is if you look at GDP, so remember GDP is the value, uh, the dollar value of all the production that occurs in a country in a year. Um, so the GDP of South Africa, in terms of official exchange rate, so if you're to go, okay, well, this many rand are earned and then turn it into dollars, it's 379.1 billion. That's the estimated 2012 value. But in PPP terms, you actually see that that number is significantly larger. It's 70% larger or so in PPP terms. Well, again, that reflects how cheap goods and services are in South Africa. So what we're saying is, with all of the production of South Africa, the 379.1 billion, you could buy the equivalent of 576.1 billion US dollars worth of goods, except we're talking about South African goods. So we're talking the value, the purchasing power of South Africa's economy expressed in terms of what it can buy in South Africa. Let's compare that to Switzerland. You see that in terms of official exchange rate, this is actually gonna be the, the exact reverse. And if anyone has lived in Switzerland, you know it's a very uh, expensive country. So here, in terms of official exchange rate, their GDP is about, uh, well, not quite twice, but it's you know 80% or so larger than South Africa's official exchange rate is or then Africa, South Africa's GDP express in official exchange rate is. But in terms of purchasing power parity, so saying with that money, what can you buy? We see that Switzerland's number goes almost in half and 359 billion for Switzerland is significantly less than the 576 for South Africa. 
Keep in mind here, too, that this is not per capita, so obviously there's a lot less Swiss people than there are people living in South Africa. There's a recent news story that's pretty important about this, so I thought to help our learning, we would go ahead and just look at it. If you look over on the OneNote, I want you to go down just a page to where it says applying the concepts, and let's go ahead and look over here. I want you to read these two articles. So there's an article to the left, and then I want you to read the article to the right. Um, if you would like to listen to this article, or at least listen to a news story about it, don't click here, this is just a screenshot, but you could go to this link here and click, and you should still be able to find it. So please read the two articles, and then when you're done, I want, I want you to answer the questions down here at the bottom. This will be due for class tomorrow, and we'll discuss your answers to these questions here.